Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Someone's awake. One person. <laughs> it's not me, I'll tell you that. Um, I have to, so I have the, the, the pleasure of uh, giving us a, sort of like a welcome and getting us rolling this morning uh, in what will be a very slow and drawn out uh, welcome for the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Um, and, um, uh, but I, um, yeah, I'm sort of really excited to be at another PKP conference. I've actually been to every PKP conference. Uh, the very first one that I uh, went to in 2007 was right when I was getting started with the project. And in fact, part of the reason that I'm involved with the project is because of that conference. Uh, I emailed, uh, yeah, I was just uh, moving back to Argentina and wanting to, uh, but I had, you know, I was living in Toronto, then I was moving myself back to Argentina, and I realized PKP was hosting a conference in Vancouver, and I've been writing some plugins, and I really just wanted to get a trip to Vancouver to visit my friends that were out there, so I emailed John Wilinski, and I wrote him, you know, I've been writing these plugins, if you could invite me to come to this conference, um, I, I could present about this work and these plugins I'm developing. Oh, by the way, I'll be in Argentina, so if you would like me to come, it's gonna require a trip up from out there. Uh, and John was actually kind enough to say, well, actually, we need someone to run workshops in Argentina, and if you would like to start running those workshops, then yes, we'll bring you out to Vancouver. And so I really got started on, uh, you know, the, in terms of like the, the impact that these conferences have had, at least on my own trajectory, has been that uh, I probably wouldn't have been uh, emailing John to participate in all of this if it wasn't because of that first conference and the gathering that was, that was taking place. And so I'm forever grateful that, um, that that conference happened and that all of the other ones that have happened since. Um, uh, and so it's, uh, these are really sort of important uh, sort of bringing people together and drawing people into the community. I know a lot of you have been involved with PKP software or with us in some way or another. Um, but I think these conferences have, can have that kind of a, an opportunity to really bring people um, together and make them feel like they're part of something bigger. And because I know that when I arrived at that conference, really not knowing much about the, uh, sort of knowing a lot about the software because I'd been developing it for a year, but not realizing uh, that it was really part of something bigger. And these conferences, regardless of how many people are actually present at them, sort of really, I think, give us that sense that there is, uh, there's a lot of, uh, like, so we're part of a much bigger uh, picture, a big, uh, much larger group of people that are all sort of working with uh, so, you know, similar aims, despite the huge amount of diversity and differences that there are in what we're all doing with, uh, what fields we come from, what roles we play in supporting this work. Um, but this, the, the conferences are really sort of that chance to see how uh, the little bits that we're all working on and that we're sort of got our heads down and, and, and working towards are, are a part of. Um, so I just wanna sort of spend a couple minutes sort of reflecting a little bit on uh, on, on not just what the, the conferences are, but a little bit sort of what is the, 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 you know, out of the three pillars that PKP has been working to be a part of, if you were part of the, if you heard John talk about in, at the opening on Wednesday, or if you've seen the report that we put out about a, uh, a year ago, um, you know, we sort of been thinking about PKP along three different sort of sets of uh, dimensions. The one that we spent a lot of time talking and thinking about is the, obviously the software. And then, there is the publishing services that I know that some people on the PKP team spend a lot of time thinking about and, and, and working on, and that maybe some of you are part of in terms of the services that we provide for hosting and managing of the journals. But I wanna talk about that third pillar, which is sort of the catch-all pillar of all of the other things that PKP does, um, which we put in terms of in that report that we put out in the Reflections and Directions document. If those of you that wanna have your head downs on your laptop, you can start typing Googling uh, PKP directions, uh, Reflections and Directions. You should be able to pull up a nice colorful PDF that has uh, some of this laid out. But that third pillar, which we called Advocacy, Research, and Education, uh, internally, we always just thought of that pillar as like, that's the community, that's the community pillar, or the community aspect of what we do. Uh, but the word community can, in some sense, captures that, that sense of all of those kinds of activities. Uh, in some sense, it's also not enough to describe the, all of the, the breadth of things that we try to do as a project that are not just the software development and not the providing the actual, the actual services. Um, 
And that community, and like I said, that catch-all word or that sort of grouping of community uh, is, you know, the word community is a very nebulous sort of concept, right? It can capture, uh, it, it can mean so many different things and we can interpret it in so many different ways. Um, and I want to talk, like I'll just want to, as we reflect on what we're doing here in terms of running a conference where we're trying to bring people together to try to um, gather as the, the important thing for me is to kind of think about how we're building community and, and what are the different ways in which that uh, is reflected. One of those ways is uh, in part of if you've been sort of involved in some of the conversation around uh, scholarly communications, there's been a lot of, uh, and we saw some of it presented by Reme in the keynote yesterday, around as we think about how the scholarly communication infrastructure is getting um, sort of gobbled up or there's a lot of sort of uh, acquisitions and the commercial interests that come at play. There's been a lot of discussion in the scholarly communications community about trying to have community owned or community operated infrastructure. And then a lot of discussion about what it means for the infrastructure or the, the technologies to be owned by a, by a community. And when I think about the role that PKP plays in all of this, and that we tried, we are a project that we consider ourselves to be a community governed project and that we are housed, we're, in fact, that we are a project and that that word project in the name is still true after over 20 years, is that we are really just a research project at a university, um, that we are not a standalone entity, we're not a nonprofit, we're not um, a company that's, that's spun out and has been doing these things. We are really a research project that's housed at a university and that in that sense, we are a project that's run by uh, academics, the academics, the very same academics that we are uh, sort of trying to serve. And that we're community owned and that most of the journals that are operating using our software tend to also be run from within uh, academic institutions, and I think pertinent to the, uh, the, the talk we're going to hear this morning around the role that academic libraries in the North American context, uh, if I think about the Latin American context, it's uh, universities that have sort of a publishing unit within them that's running, uh, and this community that, so that interpretation of community around who are the people that are leading the publishing that's happening, uh, or the, the scholarly communications uh, space that's, that's taking place. And so there's a lot of debate and conversation around the value of having these projects led by academics where the interests that are, and the decisions that get made to guide the projects and to guide the publishing units or to guide the journals or the, or the presses are being governed by the very same people that are subjected to the rules and logic of academia, right? Instead of being subjected to the rules and logics of a market and a profit-based uh, modus. But there's lots of questions and discussions there that, um, I mean, we could have a whole sort of talk and you can spend a whole day talking about what it means and what are the kinds of community organizations and governance structures that we might want to see. Then there's community that as we also conceive of it in terms of like, there's a community of journals and sometimes we talk about community in that sense. The community of, we think of who is the community that we as a project are trying to serve and it's all of these journals that are spread out around the world and we often think of ourselves as trying to give a voice to this community of primarily um, sort of a smaller or like I said academic led journals um, and often if you've ever seen that map that we've like have you know have put up several times not um, uh, that show that there's our journals are really spread out and very with a very worldwide reach a lot of Latin America and Southeast Asia we have journals in Africa uh, we have basically you know, journals in every continent and thinking around what it is that this community and how, do, how can we think about this collective of journals as a, as a community. And within that community, we can then break that down in any number of different intersecting and overlapping ways, right, by disciplines or by in, within countries. We've started to see, you know, yesterday I was part of a conversation around the, the journals from uh, Spain, or the, you know, the OJS instances from Spain wanting to sort of come together and have a voice. We've seen communities like that prop up uh, in Germany. I think in the past we've seen in Italy. There's been conversations in, uh, in different parts of Latin America to try to think about dif different little subsets. So there's community in the sense that every journal or everybody that's using the software forms part of a community. And then there's the community that I think probably is the one that we can consider ourselves to be being a part of here, which is all of the people that are in some ways 
providing some, uh, have some part of their role in terms of, that in, of what their job is or part of what they're, what they're doing uh, involves using the software from either they're helping to manage it or they're helping to run one of these journals, but they can kind of think of ourselves as like our user community and our software developer communities that sort of come together around the practical use of, of the software. And I think that this is, um, uh, so we know we, this word community sort of plays out in all of these very different ways and that what we have always seen as the biggest value of this conference is that it's the fact that it starts to both make us uh, sort of build that community of users and people that are coming together, but it also makes us realize the fact that there are all of these other ways in which we are a part of something that's much bigger than ourselves and the work that we're doing on our on our day to day. Um, the, I said part, a lot of the what we what we get as an organization, as PKP, out of these events is like it's for us. It's like this: we're getting the face-to-face -face time with a community when it can be a concept that can be so nebulous or or broad. And so, what I want to do, just as I sort of in 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 the last couple minutes that I have as in this, like I said, very sort of drawn out uh, welcome, is to um, get. Uh, us to think about that these are, you know, this is one space in which we have an opportunity to sort of hear from you directly, and this is one way in which we can feel part of something that is, uh, that is larger than ourselves. But I want to sort of invite you to take a moment and think about what are the other ways in which you or the people that you work with would be able to, what are other things about PKP that, that you think that we should be listening to and that we should be having um, uh, more interactions with you on? We're always, we, we've been really trying to strengthen this sort of bilateral, this communication that sort of goes sort of uh, bi-directional, sorry, um, so that we can not just be putting out information to the community uh, and we can hear more from you. And so I want to just pause for a moment and have you think about what are other things that you've been wishing that PKP heard? What are other things that you're wishing that as an organization uh, we could, we could be doing differently? Or what's another thing that you think that here's this little feature that I've wanted, or here is this, uh, this way in which I think that if PKP knew this reality that I was facing, they would, could consider it. So I want you to just spend a moment, and here I'm borrowing a page from Tara yesterday of just giving you a timed minute to reflect on what's something that you think you've been thinking about that P you think that you know, PKP or the broader community should know and just write that down somewhere. Put it into, just you know, type it out if you've got your laptop or your phone out, write it onto a piece of paper. But what's some reflection or something you've been wanting or some thought you've been that you think that it would be good for us to know and just take a minute to uh, write that down. Good, I hear a little bit of typing. Okay, now is where I'm going to know if you really wrote it down or not, because I'm going to give you my email address and get you to send it to me. Okay, so my, I, I want to sort of gather all of these little thoughts, and I will then put them and bring them whenever the PKP team meets next. These little sort of thoughts and ideas, I mean, you don't have to share it if you don't want to, but if you had been wanting, this is something that was on your mind that you think PKP should have been listening to. This is a chance where you've had an expressed invitation to take that little snippet of an idea, even if it's not fully fleshed out, even if it's just sort of an initial thought in an area of something, um, send it to my email. It's Juan, J-U-A-N, at Alperin, my last name, A-L-P-E-R-I-N, dot C-A, for Canada, okay? And share that thought. But don't stop there. Keep that, be, try to, you know, here I was just trying to sort of force us to sort of break that barrier, that little thing that stops us from actually giving back that feedback or giving back those, those thoughts. Um, because we're always, we always, when we sometimes gather in places like this, we all of a sudden get a flood of things that people have been holding on to tight. And I think Alec was mentioning, 
yesterday, you know, sometimes we then someone will show up, he's, here's the 20 features, things I've wanted for OJS, and they'd been holding on to it for two years, uh, and they hadn't actually shared it with us. And so we need to open up those lines of communication. There's a whole, we, we, are, we know that we could do more at soliciting this information. This is as expressed as a way of saying, like, if I'm telling you to flood my inbox, it's because we really, really want to have these things. But share it on our forum, put it onto our GitHub, file it as an issue, uh, send it to the PKP contact address, um, tweet it at us. However you can. I know that, like I said, I know that we could probably do better at collecting this information or collecting and having this conversation happen in both directions. Uh, having to gather everyone physically in a room every two years is probably not the most efficient way of trying to solicit that feedback, but it really is important to us. One of the things that has guided us in terms of being a community-led uh, project is that we have since, especially around using, with, with the forum and with the events that we go to, has been this ability to be able to be responsive to the needs. And whatever we hear the community is wanting, we have a long, 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 long list of things that we're trying to do, but whatever the community is clamoring for, uh, those are the things that we try to prioritize and, and put forward. And so I, um, so I invite you to sort of use this opportunity to get that sort of uh, thought process going about reaching out to us and to keep it going even when we're not having uh, the years that we're not having a conference or even if you're not uh, at, a, at a sprint. Okay, I'm checking my email now to see how many have come in and I'll, re I'll report in one moment. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, there. Someone has, a, one person has already sent theirs through, so thank you. <laughs> no, but, but I, I, I'm saying it, how, I know you think I'm joking, but I'm really serious about you trying to put these things down and, and get them to us. Some, any, any thoughts about what it is that, that we're doing? Um, it is, uh, yeah. This, uh, if anyone, oh, let me just say, if anyone wants to share, if you don't want to send it by email, but you would like to speak up right now, I still have six minutes left that I've been trying to sort of drag this out for as long as possible. So if you would like to help me fill these six minutes, this is, you know, you would be doing me a solid. Okay. Then, uh, with that, I'll just say, say one last thing before I turn to introducing our, um, our speaker for today, um, for, this, for this morning. Thank you for coming, and thank you for being part of this, uh, for this community, in whichever way you want to take that definition of our community is, because uh, it is what drives our work, what motivates us to do the things that we're doing every day as a project. It's what makes us realize that we're contributing to something that's worthwhile because in, for us to be able to really see the impact that we're having, because the impact that we have as a project is really only uh, seen through the work that you are all uh, you are all doing. We can only, we only sort of are here to sort of enable you to do the things that you do. So thank you for doing the work that you do, and for um, and for coming here to take part and and getting helping us to realize uh, and to support us in uh, contributing to uh, to everyone. Okay, let me now switch over to my. That was my welcome role. Let me switch over to my. Uh, moderator role, and I think even though we're still five minutes early, we can, if you're ready, I can get us started anyway. Uh, and so just give me a second here to pull up my notes. Oh, I do have, sorry, one housekeeping item which will help me fill the last five minutes here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for those that have uh, signed up for the walking tour this evening, or for anyone that is still curious about the walking tour or would like to do it this evening, uh, find Marissa. Marissa is wait lifting up her hand over there, so everyone stare at her right now for a second. Uh, if you would like to um, join the walking tour, or if you don't get a chance to find her, just go to the registration table right at the very end of the day after the last session. And go to the registration table, and then she'll sort of get everyone organized and figure out where you go from there. She'll give you those uh, those uh, details. Okay. Okay. So now it is uh, my distinct sort of pleasure to introduce to you um, Catherine Skinner, 
who is the executive director of the Educopia Institute, a non-for-profit non education organization that empowers collaborative communities to create, share, and preserve knowledge. She is, the fa uh, she is the founding program director of the Meta Archive Cooperative and played a founding role in the Library Publishing Coalition, the Big Curator Consortium, and a Software Preservation Network. Catherine received her PhD in American Studies from Emory University and regularly teaches graduate courses and workshops in digital librarianship and preservation topics. She also provides consultation services on community cultivation, sustainability, scholarly communications, and digital preservation topics. And sort of very relevant to the work that we're doing here with PKP, she's also like the, you know, co-PI on a project to investigate and document journal publishing library workflows, which is obviously something that PKP cares deeply about uh, and is involved in projects and sort of envisioning the future and, and putting together projects to sort of implement those, uh, put those workflows together. Uh, and so we're very excited to have had a chance to have her here today that she accepted this invitation to speak and come and share some of her thoughts with us. So please join me in welcoming her. <laughs> 